Okay, so welcome back. Uh, now this is part three in a series of videos where we look at some methods we might want to use in order to fake out our computer to make it think there is mouse activity. And in the first couple of videos, we looked at um, you know how does it how does an optical mouse work on a computer, and we looked at some um, options that you might see on the internet that I found to be maybe ten or twenty percent um, reliable. And um, so we discussed in part one, how does an optical mouse work and what, what do we need to consider? And in part two, we started to put together an actual design and we used a Raspberry Pi plus a servo such as this. And uh, we programmed the Raspberry Pi to randomly move this servo arm um, a random number of degrees every minute or two or whatever we want to set it. And then we can just put the mouse on top of the device and uh, it will simulate mouse motion. And ultimately, we're going to come up with a design of a box like this that has um, the servo inside the box. And it's, we're going to put an uh, Arduino. Well, it's got the servo inside and I put some cardboard and a little, little piece of um, spare mouse pad on the top here. You just lay the mouse on top and every minute or two it rotates this a random amount of degrees and simulates mouse activity. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to actually put it together, here's some of the parts, we're going to put it together using an Arduino Nano and we're going to program it and um, I encourage you to look at the first two parts so you can uh, get an idea about what we're doing and why and um, here we're going to put it all together and build, build this. We'll show you how to do that. Now, before we get into it, um, I want to talk a little bit about my experiences with Arduino. Um, Arduino, they have a store, a website store on the internet. And I believe Arduino, the company is based out of Europe. So um, what I did to order the Arduino Nano, I went on their website and put in an order. And the, the Nano was about 20 maybe $25 US with shipping and everything else. So um, about $25 and I put in the order on a Sunday and um, I noticed that the distributor in the US, the address was located only about a three hour drive from where I live. So I figured, okay, three hours away, you know, it might be here the next day, might be here Monday or Tuesday. Well, no, it actually it, it wasn't until Thursday that I got an updated um, information about the shipping. Um, prior to Thursday, it was we don't have any information on when it will be delivered. So, okay, it's three hours away, but it takes four or five days to ship. So, okay, that is what it is. So when I got the Arduino, it basically came in a bag like this. And it's, you know, one of those typical shipping bags. It's got a little bit of um, uh, bubble plastic on the inside. And it looked a little bit beat up. And I took out the Arduino box. And this is basically what I found. And again, I, I, I opened it here, so ignore that. But the box was pretty well beat up, right? You can see it's something happened to that box that wasn't good. Uh, it looks like it got squished completely like this. So, uh, not good. So then I open it up and to my surprise there is no um, sturdy box inside. Usually you have like a, just a, a cover with the logos and everything. But then you've got a sturdy cardboard box inside to protect the electronic device. Well, no, there's nothing on the inside. So I pulled it out. I pulled out the Arduino Nano and it was basically just like this on this piece of foam and if you look closely you can see that these pins are absolutely destroyed okay in fact they were worse than this I had to take some um, needle nose pliers and straighten these out a little bit because they were actually touching so absolutely destroyed and then these pins on the side here I had to straighten out but there were three pins here that were also bent over. So, you know, not good. You wait a week and then you get this thing that is absolutely destroyed. Now, I don't know 
if it was a FedEx problem or an Arduino problem, but the point is you do not ship a sensitive piece of electronic components with pins like this in a box with no protection in it. I mean, it just makes zero sense. So, um, needless to say, I'm not too thrilled with the Arduino quality control. Um, so, it, it is what you, it is, but um, you can use your own judgment, but for me, I'm not going to order from Arduino anymore. Uh, that's an easy decision. So now the next question was, okay, what am I going to do about it? How do I return it? You know, who do I talk to? So if you go on the Arduino website, arduino.cc into the contact us area, um, you can see that there's a bunch of stuff here, but none of it seems to apply to receiving destroyed equipment. There's user support right on the forum, all right? Bug reporting, well, this isn't a bug. Documentation, I don't need documentation. Um, developers mailing list, I don't need that. Teachers mailing list, press inquiries, events and conferences, product distribution, uh, how to become a distributor, trademark licensing. Uh, you know, it's got all this stuff, but not, nowhere does it say, who do I talk to? Who do I email to get help with this problem? So what I did is I took a photo and I responded to the email that I received saying that the item was shipped, and that was to, uh, I believe it was stores-usa.arduino.cc. Um, so I sent it, an email to that on a Friday, never got a response after half day. So I went back on this website and went to the, in the contact us, you can enter a request. Um, and this is basically one of those you know, contact us if you have a question. Uh, it didn't really apply, but anyway, I filled it all out, sent this um, request with my information, and got a response back that said, well, uh, our hours are, since this is in Europe, they're about between six and nine hours ahead of the U.S. This was a Friday afternoon. They're closed on the weekends, so then I have to wait over the weekend to get a response. So, um, really not, not a good thing. Um, they need to be a lot better about shipping and about contacting people if you have problems. So what I did is I went on Amazon and I found a company called Elegu, which is, I believe, a Chinese manufacturer, of course. And they provide three knockoff Arduinos with cables, um, for about the same price, about 20 or $25. So it's very fast. You get three for the price of one, plus you get cables. So my only point here is be careful. Uh, if you're going to order an Arduino, you can get some knockoffs, what I call knockoffs. Basically, this is open source hardware. Uh, anybody can build it. So, you know, look at your other alternatives rather than going direct to Arduino. Um, you know, even if one of those knockoffs, uh, one of the three knockoffs is bad, um, for $20, you, you still get a lot more than for the Arduino. So again, use your own judgment, just be careful. Okay, so now before we um, do our, our final design, um, there are some things you're going to want to think about uh, if you're going to apply a motor with your Arduino or Raspberry Pi or whatever. And you may have said, well, wait a minute, I'm going to apply a motor winding across, say, the 5 volts of an Arduino or Raspberry Pi. Um, the motor is going to require current. How much current is, going to, is it going to be drawing from the uh, 5 volt from the Arduino? And is that okay? Or is it going to damage it or something? So, so the best way that I have found to answer questions like that is to actually measure it yourself. Don't go online and ask 20 people and get 30 different answers from people who really don't know the answer themselves. Um, measure it yourself. So what I did is I took the servo and I connected uh, the motor, which is the red to brown wires on the um, SG90, um, I connected that motor in series with a half ohm resistor I had. And the goal here was to figure out how much current is drawn through the motor as it operates. Okay, so I added the half ohm resistor and used my oscilloscope and measured the voltage 
generated across that resistor as the motor is operating, okay? So, for example, if I get, you know, if the motor's running and I get a pulse of voltage across this resistor of, say, uh, 0.5 volts, that tells me that I've got an amp of current running through this motor. Because 1 amp times 0.5 ohms equals 0.5 volts, or 500 millivolts. When you're doing engineering stuff like that, before you go look at the scope results, the best thing you can do is figure out what you expect first and see if that, uh, the, the actual results line up with that. So what do we expect? Well, if you look at the spec sheets, whatever you can find for the SG90, they talk about uh, 0.2 to 0.7 to 0.8, some kind, something like that in terms of current draw. But we know this is a motor. You know, they're electromechanical devices. They've got windings. They've got inductances. So they're probably going to take an, an initial peak of current, and it's probably going to decay, right? Any motor, when you start a motor, uh, AC or DC motor, it's probably going to take an initial peak as it energizes the inductance, and it's going to draw a peak, and then it's going to decay. So we expect maybe... Um, a peak and then a decaying voltage across this resistor and it might be um, you know half a volt or maybe 0.2 volts or something like that. So now let's go take a look at the results and see what we get. Okay so here are the results and you can see on the time axis I've got um, 50 milliseconds per division. So this is 50 milliseconds so the total uh, width is about 0.1 seconds, okay? So I've got 0.1 seconds, and you can see the voltage is 0.1 volts per division, so I've got 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0 0.45, 0 0.5. So um, again, we've got 0.5 volts through 0.5 ohms. That's about 1 amp. So there's a peak of about 1 amp of current, and it quickly decays down to about um, 0.1 volt over 0.5 ohms. So that's about a 0.2 amps of current. So you can see it's an initial rush, inrush of about uh, 1 amp, and it drops to about 0.2 amps. So now we have a feel for the fact that the motor is going to draw about 0.2 to 1 amp for a short duration. So now the question is, is that okay? Um, you know, a USB 2 is like half an amp rated. USB 3 is 0.9 amps rated. Uh, do you feel lucky? I, you know, I don't think it makes that much difference. Um, I think as long as the motor keeps working and as long as you're, you know, you don't get a fuse blown or something else, uh, you know, this only goes once every minute. So you're not going to get any thermal problems. So I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but, you know, if you want to get all excited about it. But at least here's a here's a, a method you can use to figure out what, what you're facing in terms of current draw. Okay, so here is the Arduino Nano um, sketch that we're going to use to control the servo. And, and functionally, it's almost identical to what we had for the Raspberry Pi, but the of course, the, um, the code is a little bit different. So the first thing we got to do is do a pound include servo.h to bring in the servo library. And I've defined the servo pin as number 9. Uh, so I made a constant integer servo pin equals 9. And I've initialized the servo angle degrees to 0. Okay. And then I instantiated a servo object called Jiggler Servo. And now the only thing I'm going to do in the setup is to set up the serial port so I can um, output the uh, angle every time it changes. You don't need to do this. This is just for testing to, so we can see what the angle is compared to what's on the scope. So you don't need this serial if you're not going to do any output. And then in the loop, uh, most of this is just comments, but um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the servo to the servo pin. And the reason why we're not doing that in the setup is because we're going to detach it later on in the loop. 
Uh, as you saw before, while we're waiting, we're going to be waiting a minute or two um, for each change in servo angle. We want to just shut it down. So I'm going to detach it. After you move to the new position, I'm going to shut it down by doing the detach and then wait for however long we want to wait and then attach it again as we start the new loop. Okay. So we do the servo attach to the servo pin, which is number nine in our case. And then I'm going to get a random angle from 0 to 90. You can do 180, you can do whatever you want. Um, I chose 90 only because it makes the um, servo not as loud. That's one of the downsides of this servo we're using is every time it moves, um, it's kind of loud. You can hear it. Um, maybe you can pad it with some foam or whatever. But keep that in mind if you're going to use a servo, you might want to find one that's a little bit quieter. But again, this is only going to operate once every minute or two. So if you hear a little, as you probably heard on the on the introduction here, um, it's it makes a little bit of a noise. So um, we're going to get a random from 0 to 90. And then here's where we just, uh, for um, debugging, we just print to the command line the um, servo angle in degrees. And here we actually write that angle to the servo, servo.write, okay? And it's an angle between 0 to 90. And then what we do is we're going to delay for two seconds just to wait for the servo to get to its new position. It doesn't take that long, but we're just going to wait for two seconds. Uh, and then we're going to shut it down. We're going to do a detach to the servo to shut it down so we don't get any more signals going to the servo. Um, you know, we don't want any noisy signals making the thing operate when it's supposed to be quiet. And then we're going to wait for three minutes. I'm just waiting for five seconds here. This would be 180,000 uh, delay or whatever you want to set. So that's basically the sketch. And it, it, it does exactly what we saw on the scope. And it's almost identical to what we saw with the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so let me briefly go through, uh, if you want to build something like this, what you might need or at least what I used. Um, first of all, you're going to need a box. These are like $2 each. You can get a pack of maybe four or five of them for $2 a piece. Very nice project boxes. I use them a lot. Uh, I'm using an SG90. Again, this is like a $2 uh, servo that you can buy uh, a package of maybe four or five of them. Again, they're kind of loud, but otherwise they work fine for some simple project like this. Um, also, um, again, Arduino Nano, um, I mentioned before about where you can buy them. Um, keep in mind that this has a mini USB connector on it. You're going to need a cable with a mini USB, not a micro, the mini. And of course, I don't have mini, mini cables, so it's a bit of a pain. But um, keep in mind, you're going to have to get the right cable that connects with this. Um, also... In order to drill a hole in this, what I used, I had this flat bladed drill bit, which is really, really nice, very sharp. This is an infinite H, turned out to be almost perfect for this. So you just drill it, takes a couple seconds to drill a hole through there and smooth it out. And then all I did was I placed the servo inside, line it up with that hole. And then what I did is I took a little piece of cardboard and I happen to have almost perfectly sized dial for a, a potentiometer. And I use that to, to um, define a, a circle on this piece of cardboard and cut it out. And it was almost exactly the right uh, size. So that's nice. So you can, you know, either use Elmer's glue or whatever to glue that circle on. And then you might want to put a mouse pad, you know, cut out a piece of a mouse pad or a piece of fabric. And that should work fine. Okay, so now let's see how it operates. I'm going to put the mouse on top of the mouse jiggler and we'll see what happens. Okay, so the mouse is on top of the jiggler and you can see that every five seconds or so it is moving. Okay, so it turns out it's very reliable um, because really it's got a mouse pad underneath it. You can use a piece of cardboard, whatever you want, um, but it really is quite reliable. And um, if you set it for every minute or two minutes or three minutes, you should be good to go. 
So anyway, I hope this helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.